I'd never been to jail before. It was the beginning of 1990, just between Christmas and the, the new decade. And I had a visit in my office late in the afternoon. I'd had a very busy day and uh, some, some policemen came and uh, asked for um, $1,650. That was the amount of money that I owed for parking fines. And because I didn't have it, that I had to go with them. So I was taken to the watch house in Herschel Street in Brisbane. And this was, began a whole new series of experiences for me. I hadn't eaten all day, and so by the time I got into the, the uh, watch house cell, it was quite good really because it was cool and it was quiet and I could just sit there and have a rest. I was very tired. Uh, some funny things happened a little later on. Uh, they threw a guy in there with me and it was about eight o'clock at night by that stage and he'd been just minding his own business watching TV and uh, the police had come into his house and arrested him because of marijuana. So they brought him in and put him in the same cell as me. About an hour or so later, one of the policemen came past and he he said to me, or said to the, to the guy, how did you get in there? And I thought that was pretty obvious. He couldn't exactly squeeze through the bars. And um, as they were taking him out again, they said to me that I should have screamed. And I thought, well, he was the most decent of all the people that I'd been, I'd been mixing with for the last few hours anyway. So he was taken out, so I was alone in there by myself again. And at about two o'clock in the morning, they put a girl in there who'd been picked up from, for prostituting in the streets. And that's when I felt that I should perhaps have been screaming because she was fairly scary and she was going off uh, swearing and screaming and carrying on like a pork chop. Breakfast came and it wasn't terribly exciting, but it was, it was better than nothing because I really had eaten nothing for 24 hours. So anything was better than nothing. At about nine o'clock or 10 o'clock, the Salvation Army send people around to talk to people who've been put into jail. And this guy stopped and talked to me and and I said to him, look, you know, I explained to him that it was just parking fines that I was there for and that we'd been doing a job in town that had had a window of opportunity for only 20 minutes and we'd brought in three of our vehicles and each time we'd been booked every time so we accrued quite a lot of parking fines and it was all through the process of trying to run the business and, and uh, I'd said to him, you know, I'd be quite, quite happy here if all I had was a couple of sheets, I needed some paper and a pen to write with, and then I could have just sat there and amused myself for, for days or hours or however long. And he'd said to me, if you want a pen, pen and paper, you'll have to go to Bogger Road, because at the jail there, they'd be able to give you pen and paper. So he said, next time you see a policeman come past, just ask him and tell him that you want to go to, to Bogger Road which is what I did. And the policeman was kind of surprised, but you know, that's, that was okay. So at around about two o'clock, uh, they organized for me to come out of the cell. At the same time, there were a couple of guys that had been arrested and they were going to go to, to Bogger Road as well. They put the handcuffs on them and uh, they responded with carrying on and screaming and just making idiots of themselves really. And when it came time to going into the paddy wagon, there were two sections, obviously, for men and women, and, they were, and then the policemen were right at the front. So, and you couldn't see, any, nobody could see anybody. But you could certainly hear, and when the, the guys were put in the back, they made lots and lots of noise. The police responded by driving along the freeway, changing lanes, very haphazardly, making the ride as uncomfortable as they possibly could, and obviously being encouraged by all the screaming and carrying on that the guys were doing in the back. And all I kept on thinking was, wouldn't it have just been better if they'd been quiet, and then there wouldn't have been uh, any stimulus for the, for the policemen to carry on the way they did? Because there's one thing I did notice in jail, and that's 
everybody who is there is in the same place and therefore a reason there. Whether they're on the side of the law or not on, on the side of the law, they're all in the same place together. So they're all affected by the same vibrations. Anyway, we got plenty of vibrations as we got over the speed bumps as we drove up into the jail because the policeman went far too fast and the guys in the back responded and that just encouraged them to go even faster. When, when I was brought in to be interviewed, they asked me, they looked at my file and they said, well, how did you get these? And I explained, because it was really just parking fines. And, and um, they asked me then questions like, how many tattoos do I have? And I was fairly surprised because I don't have any tattoos. And they asked me how many piercings I had. And this was 25 years ago now. So that was quite unusual. And I said, well, I've got pierced ears, just one in each ear. And she, he, they said, well, you'll be the only one like that. So that was a bit surprising. I really felt like a fish out of water. And then they gave me some pretty nasty soap. And I understand that that was to get rid of the lice and the, the nits that you might have in your hair. And then they gave me some clothes to put on. And that was quite fun because the underpants that I was given were exactly the same brand that I used to get for myself anyway. So I scored three pairs of underpants that were just the same as what I had at home. Then I asked for them, them for my pen and paper. And they were really surprised because I don't suppose anybody has ever asked them for that. And they gave me three, three sheets of paper and one pen. So consequently later on I was able to fill it every which way. I wrote it this way and and then that way and then I turned it round and I did it upside down and I went along sideways and I wrote it every way I possibly could. I filled up that whole piece, those pieces of paper, every mortal square millimetre of it. I was taken to the the most, the least uh, security area because after all it was really just parking fines and there were about half a dozen people there and they they had gone through the process and they were just about ready to be released so I, I was in that crew and we had our own little our own little like containers and it was almost like a holiday uh, the problem was of course if you wanted to go out the door, you'd be shot by the guys that were patrolling around the perimeter of the jail. Slight little problem, but it was Christmas anyway. So you could pretend you were having a holiday. When it was really fun when it came for any food or any kind of um, um, entertainment area, any t entertainment time, uh, we had to mix then with the, the people, not only with my group, but the group that was coming up. So the process when you normally go into jail, you go into maximum security, then you graduate through to another section and then you get the next section. Well, we mixed with that section. And, and so we were, I was mixing then with murderers who'd been in jail for 10 and 12 and 15 years. So that was kind of interesting. So when we were queuing up for breakfast, um, breakfast consisted of those Kellogg's cornflakes packets that you normally get in a motel. The ones that have uh, rice bubbles and uh, cocoa pops and cornflakes and all bran and um, whatever else they have. There's about six different flavours. And they had them all lined up on the table. Well, obviously the cocoa pops were the most popular and uh, there was a fair amount of pushing and shoving to get to the cocoa pops. And I was quite, quite happy to let those murderers just have their cocoa pops and their rice bubbles, and I was just fine with all bran. After all, it makes you regular, it's pretty good. There were some other interesting things that happened. Um, there was a fairly aggressive sort of a woman, and she kept on encouraging me to go and do other things. And I was advised by a few of the other people, don't listen to her, she's only just really trying to get you into trouble. So just keep away from her. Another funny thing that happened there was the fact that um, we had, uh, there was a carpet machine there. Because I'd been cleaning for so long, 
I was the only one that knew anything about the carpet machine and I, I showed them all how to use how to use that machine and I steam cleaned some of the carpets around the place for them and it was quite funny uh, when it was time for me to go they weren't very happy because they thought they had me for a little bit longer so I could actually go ahead and clean the whole jail for them so that was really quite funny I spent some time talking to some different people um, there was there was a guy there who was actually transsexual so that was a kind of interesting mix he was Aboriginal and and transsexual and somehow or other he managed to dye his hair orange and and I'll never forget him he wore a purple singlet showing off his um, his new voluptuousness and having wearing very short orange shorts so he wanted to get to know me and he wanted my contact details so that we could catch up when he got out of jail so I have to tell you I wasn't too keen on passing that information on and another nice thing was that or another thing that happened was that the Salvation Army are really really good in jail and I had a couple of long conversations with them and because it was so close to Christmas they gave me a Christmas present pack and it included a little washer that had been hand crocheted and some pretty soap and um, uh, and something else and I still have that washer to, to this day as a memory of, of my, my visit in jail. They don't, they keep you not informed with anything and that's part of the process of keeping you submissive and um, it's, it was very, very interesting to experience how, how they take away any kind of your self-worth. And if they call it a correctional centre, I uh, would suggest that perhaps they need to reorganise their processes because I would suggest it's not really correctional. On New Year's Eve, uh, that was kind of interesting because at midnight, uh, the wardens, I'm sure they were enjoying the party. Uh, they came around banging with their batons on all the on all the, the cells, on the, yeah, on the bars on the cells. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! And you could, could tell they were really fairly under the weather. And that was the time that I felt most unsafe. And uh, I, I could, I'll never forget the feeling that I just hope that those bars are strong enough to keep those people out because I needed to be kept away from them inside. It was fairly scary. And the thought, it would have been a better thought to have run outside and been shot rather than have those women come anywhere near me. They were scary. They were scary. Um, I, I was um, only there for four or five days. Uh, it was probably extended because of the public holidays and they didn't have the processing capacity to release you until the end of the public holiday and so I was quite fortunate really because the fine was $1,650 and basically I think I was there in the process from the beginning to the end five days so I earned over $300 each day and I got fed so it was pretty cool. I want to thank you for logging on to this QR link and for sharing some of the experiences that I've had uh, through my book and I'd like to hope that you can see in your own lives some of the things that the experiences that you have drawn to yourself um, that in hindsight you can understand the value the valuable learning that you've been able to receive by going through these experiences and never never think that you've made a wrong decision in your life because down the track you'll be able to sit back and and reflect and understand that every decision that you make is perfect and every experience you draw to yourself to allow more learnings to come for your life. We need to make changes and um, one of the changes that I've made is that I don't park in against the traffic signs as often as I used to.